Okay, welcome all. So often I get asked questions. It's like, Master, how come you only promote CATL and BYD in the EV industry? Isn't the China government pushing into many new technologies? Shouldn't you try to take position in these new uh, industries and capture the growth? For example, like semiconductor, artificial intelligence, robotics, then EV, which is electrical vehicle. So I think for new investors, the danger is that you recklessly invest into all this new technology and you will lose big money. So EV, semiconductor, AI and robotics, do you know that most of these companies, they are loss making. As a whole, I would say 90% or more of these companies in these industries, they are loss making. If you buy ETF to invest in all this new technology, you confirm lose money. You cannot buy all of them. You must be super, super selective. And this revolution won't be overnight. It will take three to five years or even 10 years. So go slow, slowly research and understand these industries. For me, right, I would say that a lot of these things, they are not within my circle of competence. They're actually very complicated. I have been doing research over the past one or two years, yet there are many things that I do not understand. So like the EV industry, I understand. That's why I dare to make a bet on BYD and I'm confident in CATL, but I will get CATL uh, in the future. So for example, like we talk about semiconductor. Why are you so in a hurry to invest in semiconductor in companies like for example, SMIC? Do you know that the valuations are very high? Are they having the best technology? The answer is no. They're actually behind the US. Am I right? Uh, for China, the semiconductor industry is actually two generations behind the US. Yet now they are being priced at such a high valuation equivalent of the US companies. Because investors believe that China is catching up and China eventually will catch up. So for me, right, BYD and CATL is obvious because they are already the leader in battery technology and they have more than 50% market share and they are already profitable. So they are profitable, they are the market leader and they are leading the US. That's why I dare to invest in so-called battery technology. Semiconductor, you are paying high valuation, but you are not the leader. Like. You are still two generations behind and you are making a huge bet, bet that you have to catch up and even surpass the US. So that's a risky bet. That's why I'm not too confident to make any bets in the semiconductor industry. And it's very complicated. How, how you build uh, the, the chips? What is the whole process? Uh, what, is, what, what are the wafer? What is the process? What is the equipment that you need? Also, it's very complicated. I also don't know how to explain. That's why if I cannot explain it, it means I don't understand it. That means I won't invest in it. So another sexy industry is robotics. Oh, you all see like, or Elon Musk show, show off the Tesla robot or Optimus, uh, Optimus Prime, uh, so I don't know. So I think of Transformer, the, the robot. So robotics is actually not a new industry. You check back my deep dive on Meiti. Meiti is an electronics player, but they have a subsidiary called Kun, Kunka, K-U-K-A. So they actually acquire this robotics arm company. There is actually a European company. So they, they fu fully acquire it. So now it's, orange, it's the orange color arm that you see a lot of those EV factory, the arm used to build those EV car. So robotics has actually been around already for the past decade and they are mainly used in factories. So for those who are newbie in robotics, right? Let me explain to you. What is the objective of robotics? Is to replace a human worker. So in the factory, you want to run 24-7, one to off so the robot arm can keep doing the same thing it can repeat it one million times 24 7 every hour every minute they keep repeat the task so for the robot arm it makes business sense it is cheaper than a worker and it's better it's more hard working it can go 24 7 no need to take mc no need to take leave once in a round it goes offline for maintenance so it makes business sense so nowadays you see the robots, right? It's human robot. It looks like a human. So, so they are positioning this as a product. But for the product to be commercially viable, it must fulfill two things. It must be cheaper 
it must be better. As simple as that. So when a human type of robot is launched, what are they trying to replace? They're trying to replace, example, your kitchen chef, your delivery worker, last mile delivery, carry the goods, send to your doorsteps, can climb up and down the stairs, can knock on your door, give you the parcel, example. Example, your, your maid, your, your so-called helper, la, can help you clean the house. You say, oh, give me a glass of water, can take the water for you. So you are trying to replace your maid or replace your delivery worker, replace your kitchen chef. Is it possible? The answer is yes, it is possible. And these robots, they will only be better and better at doing this task. Am I right? Is this theory correct? The answer is yes. The robot will be better at cooking, better at cleaning, better at doing delivery. Five to 10 years later, I believe such a robot can replace the helper, the, the cleaner, the delivery, and also the chef, but not now. Now they are unable to replace. Why? Because it is too expensive and it's not as good. It is not as, as good. Currently, human robots, they are still not as good and they are too expensive. It has to be affordable. Eventually, we will come to that, but it will take many years. I think fastest three years, but more realistic, five to 10 years. That's why I do not have an urgency to invest in robotics company. And there are so many of them and most of them that they IPO, they are loss making. Why you want to invest in a loss making company? Am I right? Loss making company, right? They are burning money every year. So why they do IPO? The IPO is to raise funds. So they can use the funds, they burn money and do more research. Even when they sell the product, they actually sell it at, at a loss because it's so expensive to, to make the robot. So if you invest in a robotic company, what happens is that every year they will do capital issue. They will placements, they will do rights issue, they will raise capital every year. And every year they will burn money. If a down cycle comes, they cannot raise capital, the robotics company can go bankrupt. So investing in robotics company is super dangerous. You can lose 100%. And I don't think there will be any so-called very successful robotics company in the short term because this technology is still not yet that it's not cheap enough it is still not good enough so avoid the robotics industry that is my thinking i may be wrong but i have done my research to able to say this unscripted and share with you all means i really got spent some time to do in this industry the way i talk sounds very simple not because i make it simple it's because i have some understanding People that talk until, oh, I talk a lot, got dragon, got phoenix, but they confuse you. It's because they don't really understand enough. So to invest in the robotics industry, to make money, you must remember, it has to be better and cheaper than a human labor. Then it will succeed. And that's robotics. So for AI, AI is the one that actually has more potential than robotics. AI is already replacing jobs. Example, you go to... Uh, like say your brokerage account, you want to go to customer service. Usually it's the chatbot. Am I right? Then you go to shopping, Lazada, Shopee. You got problems, you want a refund. It's all chatbots because there are millions of users. Cannot be you, everyone call in, I pick up your call and answer your question and help you. So nowadays you can see that the customer service, right, has totally re be replaced by chatbot already. And what is a chatbot? A chatbot is AI. So AI is real. AI is able to replace a human job. But the problem is AI is not 100% accurate. AI often makes mistakes. So artificial intelligence, if you invest in this, right, your bet is that the AI can replace human. Am I right? So that's the, that's the end game. But the thing is that, right, currently AI, they are replacing only areas that, right, allows the AI to make mistakes. I give you an example. I myself, I'm a one-man company. Do I use AI? Yes. I use AI in two areas. Number one, research. Number two, editing. So I'm using an editing software called CapCut. So when you look at below here, there's the subtitles. All subtitles are 100% generated by the AI. So in the past, if I have to own self type out everything, it will take me maybe two to three hours. Now AI generate, it takes them five minutes only. But is the AI accurate? The answer is no. If I own self do, it will be accurate. 
but I have to spend two, two to three hours. The AI replaced uh, me and helped me to type out all the subtitles. But is it 100% accurate? No. I would say that it's about 90% accurate. 90% accurate. So AI doing the subtitles for me below, will it be more accurate or less ac accurate? It will only become more accurate over time. So now maybe it's 90%. Every year, it will be more accurate. Five years later, maybe the accuracy is 99%. Am I right? So that's the power of AI. So another example is doing my research. Research, I still mostly manually read the annual report or this, but sometimes I need to double check, especially where I want to check example like EV industry. Like I look at the numbers, now. you can ask the chatbot, is it true that out of every five vehicles being sold now, one of them is an EV uh, car. You go and search Gemini. I, I use Gemini, la, which is under Alphabet. Also, uh, because I myself, I I'm a YouTuber. So my content is posted on YouTube. Gemini, when they check, they have all the data from YouTube search, Google search. So it helps me uh, to check my work. So, so I use Gemini as a checker. I, checker. I do my primary research. My secondary task is checking. So... The German 9 AI is the one that helps me check my work before I present it to you all. So like I asked the German 9, is my this research accurate or not? Then they will find for me. And I say, your research is slightly accurate based on the data, like maybe 20% of all automobiles being sold is an electric vehicle or a hybrid. 80% is ice vehicle. So I know that my research is correct. Then I present to you all. Am I right? But sometimes they check. Are you confident? 100% Gemini check for me is 100% correct. I don't think so. Uh. Even I, I don't have the confidence. Uh. Also, but when I present to you the information, I don't have to be 100% correct. Because I'm not a, like this research, I'm not what, submitting to a company that is paying me $1 million to do the research. Am I right? It's just a casual sharing. And I tell you that, Sometimes maybe my sharing, there might be error. Instead of like maybe I tell you 6%, the fact is actually 5%. So the 1% difference, it is not fatal. It's not fatal. So it's okay to make minor mistakes when doing research. But it cannot be like vastly incorrect. Lah. Like it's black color, you say it's red color. Totally something different. It's apple, you say it's orange. Okay, cannot like that. Lah. Then totally wrong already. Lah. So it will still be relevant. Just that there might be some... Uh, accuracy mismatch uh, it's not 100% accurate also AI so the same thing I ask you when I use AI to check my word uh, will it become better over time or worse over time it will only become better it will only become better but it won't I don't think it will ever become 100% so AI is very useful to help you do work that the work is not something that is critical or that is not a matter of life and death. <laughs> yeah, so things that you can do, like the subtitles, that it's okay to make mistakes. Then you let AI do, like customer service. The AI gives you the wrong answer. Then you're angry, then you call. In the end, it's a human answer you. But 90% of the time, the AI, the chatbot, can, the customer service is able to solve your problem. For example, like, uh, I want to open the account, what are the steps? Then they tell you a step. Uh, give me a link. For example, I want to apply for a refund. Then you... What, what is the step? Then you ask the chatbot, then the customer service, or oh, please click this link, fill up the form to get a refund. So the, the chatbot, 90% of the time, can actually solve your problem. 10% of the time, you cannot solve the problem, then they redirect, they redirect you to a human customer service. So that is AI. But how to invest in AI? Ah, So AI, right? All this so-called chatbot, right? Behind, there is a brain. A brain and this brain is actually a code a computer code and it's open source everybody can tap into this brain and this then this brain like example just now what I you I run is Gemini to check so Gemini is a large language model so that's the brain I use the cap card auto generate the subtitle behind the brain is under by dance the company so Alibaba has also the brain called Tong Yi Chen Wen, Quan. So like that example, you go to Lazada, you use the chatbot. Behind the brain is Quan, is Tong Yi Chen Wen. Oh? So what Alibaba is selling, right? They are selling the brain. And they are selling the brain 
for free. You can use Quen for free. You can use Gemini for free. But the bite down one, uh, I think they also have a free model. Also, most of this AI you can actually use for free. Am I right? So how they make money? They make money by selling the computing, selling the token, or in layman's sense, they are selling cloud service. So when you use the Gemini, what's behind that fuels the Gemini is Google Cloud. Am I right? When you use Quen, what is behind Quen? Ali Cloud. So behind AI, right? The one that make money, right? Is the cloud service. I repeat again, huh? The only thing that is making money now in AI is the cloud service. You use Gemini is free. Am I right? How do they don't they cannot monetize? The only thing that make money for Alphabet is Google Cloud. So the top four cloud players in the world, number one, Amazon Web Service. Number two, Microsoft Azure. Number three, Google Cloud. Number four, Ali Cloud. If you want to make money riding the AI boom, just bet on cloud. But the thing is, Amazon, Microsoft, Alphabet, they are not cheap already. Uh, so they are trading at 30 to 40 times earnings. Alibaba, Ali Cloud is still cheap because you can get it at 20 over times earnings. So to me, the AI, I don't invest in all those AI startups. To me, the clear and obvious way to make money in AI is the cloud business. That's why Alibaba is my biggest position. Alibaba basically is two business, e-commerce and cloud. As simple as that. If you ship everything else, the most basic thing that they do is e-commerce and cloud. E-commerce is they are the market leader and it generate cash. It's a cash cow. Ali Cloud is the growth business. It's the high growth business. It's the AI business. So today I covered four areas: EV, artificial intelligence, semiconductor, and robotics. So of these four areas, I'm only betting in two new technology. I'm betting on EV industry. My bet is BYD and CATL. I bought BYD. I will try to pick up CATL in the future because CATL now is expensive. For AI, my bet is Alibaba, AliCloud. As simple as that. For robotics, like I tell you already, it's very difficult. I'm skipping robotics. I'm not investing in robotics. Semiconductor, like I mentioned already. Uh, the Chinese players are behind the US players. So we want, why you want to invest in a technology that is behind? So I'm also skipping semiconductor. That's why robotics and semiconductor, I am skipping. So I don't invest in robotics and semiconductor. It's not because I don't understand. It's because I understand this industry cannot make money. That, or it's difficult for me to make real returns. That's why I avoid. But I think these two, semiconductor, semiconductor and robotics, there are a lot of traps. And a lot of these companies, they are loss making. So you have been warned. So for me, I will avoid robotics and semiconductor. I think of all the new technology to make money, I think EV and AI, these two, is uh, easier to make money because they have a real life use. Example, EV car disrupt the ice industry. It is cheaper, easier to maintain, and, and people like it, man, and, and it's environmental friendly. So EV is definitely a good product and you will capture market share. AI, like I mentioned already, AI replacing jobs is real and AI the benefits is real and behind it invest in the brain in, in, invest in the thing that fuels the brain which is the, the cloud huh? so hopefully my sharing today gives you insight you watch this video you wake up already you see the industry more clearly and that's the value I give to you all bye bye